Navis Timeliner creates 4D simulations, a simulation that includes time of the construction of 3D models by attaching items in the model to tasks with a start and end date. You can create a simulation that shows sections of the model being added or removed over time, according to the scheduled tasks. With Timeliner, you can also link the objects to tasks in an external scheduling file and synchronize the simulation with the actual status of the project. Actual and planned dates can be associated with the tasks, simulating actual against planned schedules. To first set up a Timeliner, what you want to do is enable your Timeliner in your user interface, so you'll see it will pop up, should be in the bottom of your screen. And you need to do something called adding tasks. So these tasks can be added manually, and these are related to the actual objects in the project, if it's walls, foundations, columns, or beams, etc. But for this example, we're just going to add them manually just so you understand uh, how you, you actually add objects to uh, an associated length of time of construction as well. So here we have our model that we were already in earlier. And what I'm going to do here in tasks, I'm just going to add a task, and I'm actually just going to name it as ground floor slab. So what we're going to do is we're going to call it ground floor slab, and this is just the ground floor slab being poured, essentially. And we're, we're just going to call it day by day. We're, we're not going to break it into hours or anything like that. We're just going to say that it starts on the 27th and ends on the 27th. Then the, re the, 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 the reason we do that and the way we actually assign different objects to it, and this is only one way of doing it, what we do, we uh, go into our model, select our model, make sure you have your selection tab selected, uh, I'm just going to select the ground floor, right click on that, uh, sorry, right click on the task and just attach current selection. So now that floor slab is now attached to this planned start date and this planned end date. Now the second thing we're going to do, we're going to add a second task. And what we're going to do, we're going to rename this and we're just going to call this ground floor walls. And we're going to keep this very simple for now, I'm not going to get, get too complicated just to explain the principle of it. And what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to sorry, delete the third one. Ground floor, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to select some of these walls uh, that are at the ground floor, essentially. So all I'm doing here is just left-clicking on my mouse and using my control key. Now, I can select category by walls. That is one way of doing it, uh, but it's good to understand how these get added as well. So all I'm doing is just adding those. I'll leave out the curtain wall for the moment just to keep it simple. And that is now right-click on the ground floor walls and attach current selection. So again, attach current selection. Go into plan start date. We'll say it starts on the 28th and ends on the 28th. The very fast form of construction we're working with here. Now we're going to add another task, a third task, and we're just going to call this. We're going to call this first floor slab, and we're going to add the first floor slab. So first floor slab. Excuse my typo. First floor slab. And we're going to do exactly what we already have done. And I've actually hidden the curtain wall here. How you hide something is you click it and just go hide. So I've just hidden those items there. They're, they're still there. They're just hidden. Selecting that slab, just attach current selection. And now we're going to do the same for first floor walls. So another task we have, I'm just going to, sorry, assign my date. And we're just going to make it uh, chronological in, in terms of day after the other, just for the purpose of this simulation. But obviously you can, you can understand that there's crossover tasks. Um, and tasks that take a lot longer than a day as well. So what we're going to do is just going to call it first floor, first walls. We'll just call it first walls. And all I'm going to do is again select that. Oh, they're all on the same uh, category or, or same model element from your Revit model, and that obviously uh, it is divided by walls within uh, our Revit model only at the ground floor. It goes from ground floor to first floor, but up here we've actually modeled it in Revit from first floor up to second floor or up to roof. So uh, for the purpose of this, we will we'll just show it this way. But that's why it's important to see how you actually model in Revit uh, then translates into maybe how you create your Revit or your Navisworks Timeliner from that Revit model as well. So now we're gonna right click on first walls and we're just going to attach current selection. Now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go into our simulate tab and our simulate tab, this is where we essentially press play and it will show the building being constructed. So a couple of settings just to make sure they're enabled. Uh, interval uh, of the, the simulation will be one day, so it will change by one day. Uh, and the whole video or simulation will be 10 seconds long. So we'll see how that plays out. Excuse the pun. 
So our model is actually hidden. And the reason it isn't just because some of our settings have not yet been enabled. And the way you go in and change your settings. Oh, yes, just to explain, you need to make sure that the task type is set to either construct, demolish or temporary. And these are all construction tasks. So this is just how we've categorized them. Construct, construct and construct. And I've set the first floor walls to occur on the 30th of the month as well. So we've got four days in a row where they're all run. So if I just go back into my simulate tab. And again, just go into my settings. So it's going to interville by a day and we've got four days. So every day lasts two and a half seconds. If you think of it that way, you can change this to 30 seconds or an hour, or however long you want it. Just for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll just leave it at that for now. Uh, it increments by a day and we only want it to be 10 seconds long. And the particular dates that we want to see are only the planned dates. We, we won't go into any of the other details for now. So I'm just going to hit play on that. And just in your configure tab, just be aware, we can actually change the color of how certain items appear, uh, similar to how phasing works in Revit. Uh, you've got different colors you can assign to, to how it appears at a different stage in the simulation. So by default, these are all the default settings. Uh, the end appearance of a constructed object is uh, uh, full solid green. And then when it starts, it's light green. And obviously for demolish, it's red. Uh, its end appearance is, is, is green. You can change that to red, obviously, or any other color you want. Uh, and you can change different objects. You can have things like cranes in here, uh, cement trucks, uh, different elements to simulate them as well, even arriving on site and when they leave and how that will all work. And if you have scaffolding models uh, and you can get quite intricate with this as well. So what I'm going to do is just hit play on that. That's going to play over 10 seconds. Our ground floor slab is constructing. You can see our first floor walls are being constructed on that day. Now our, 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 sorry, our first floor slab is now in and now our second set of walls have been constructed. And you can understand how you build up a simulation model based on these different types of elements. Now, that's a very simple model with four tasks. You know, a, a construction model is going to have hundreds or thousands of tasks, depending what construction stage you want to construct it at. Uh, but you can link in with different data sources, including Microsoft Project or even Primavera as well by pulling in that information, which is commonly used on construction projects as well. And uh, being able to link that into your tasks uh, entirely is possible too. You can also automate the adding on tasks as well. So just go to auto add tasks. You'll see it here just beside add task, insert task or auto add tasks. For every topmost layer, you can add uh, every topmost item from the model and it will automatically give it a date. Now, these mightn't be accurate necessarily in terms of the actual construction project, uh, but it will actually give them a date as well. So it's added in uh, walls to be constructed at different times, uh, floors, roofs, doors, windows, and broken those down into essentially your, your rep categories. And then we can again go into our uh, simulate tab, just hit play on that. And you can see all of that inf other information will come in, which has been uh, not selected in the first selections. So we can see we've got windows and different elements and we're going to have internal columns, etc., etc., coming into that as well. So if we had more items in the, the model itself, you would in fact obviously have more uh, automated creative tasks. But that's one way of creating is by automating your, your every utmost uh, item or you can create something called set. So you might have all of your furniture uh, on one set or all of your light fittings on one set, you know, for your second fix, fix uh, an electrical uh, fit out. Uh, and so on and so forth, all of your partitions or all of your stud work, uh, all of your fireproofing, etc., can also be added into this timeline.